Haven't back. you lost some weight since oh. I was last here? <laughs> well, I'm going to say it. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK. And today we'll be counting down our picks for the 10 times Richard Maidley pissed off everyone. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. God, stop playing games. The question is really simple. Why don't cyclists... I'm not playing games. I've asked <sighs> you five times. Would Which you listen to a question? For this list, we're looking at all the times Maidley went full partridge on television. Let us know in the comments who's better, Piers Morgan or Richard Maidley. Wrong riddle. Maidley filled in for Matthew Wright on The Right Stuff one day and decided to test the studio audience and guests with a brain teaser. Brothers and sisters have I none. But that man's father is my father's son. So who was I talking about? The audience jumped in and offered solutions to the riddle, but Maidley repeatedly told them they were wrong, and that the man was, in fact, talking about himself while looking in a mirror. My producer's telling me, who, you, who do you think it is, Alex? <laughs> he's, he's not pointing at his son. Unfortunately for Maidley, the correct answer is that the man's son is the person he's looking at. Oh, I've done a Theresa May. I'm going to have to do a U-turn. <laughs> <laughs> he's informed by the producers that he's wrong and everybody else in the studio is right in a wholly embarrassing moment. He was so close, but so far. Let's agree that they're both right. Devon Brown. I sort of use hypnotic techniques sometimes oh. um, covertly, but uh, I kind of made that decision not to, not to include hypnosis. In. Yeah. Could you outsmart Devon Brown? Probably not, but don't feel too bad. Neither could Richard Maidley and he tried to do it on live TV. The mind-bending mentalist appeared on Richard and Judy in 2004, talking to the couple about how he developed his talents for magic, hypnosis, and tele-trickery. Is it in this hand? Yes. Is it in this hand? Yes. Oh, you're really good at this then. Maidley wants Brown to do a simple parlour trick, guessing which of his hands he's hidden a pound coin in. He holds up his hands in preparation and bets Maidley 50 quid that he can guess correctly. Either I don't know or you haven't got it in either, you haven't got it in either hand, have you? <laughs> you? Right, don't do that to me. <laughs> hey presto, Brown knows immediately that it's not in either hand. Richard was trying to pull a fast one on him. Cyclists. This debate on GMB was sparked by the tragic death of mum of two Kim Biggs, a pedestrian who was killed after a collision with a cyclist. The cyclist was on trial at the time and later went down for manslaughter, while ITV got someone from Cycling UK, a cyclist advocacy group, to talk about changing road laws. Could you respect which, them which, and just which, give which, us which a direct... I don't want to hear... Do you want to the question sir, we or, didn't the ask you, or the We didn't position. ask you about which, which policing on the road. Which we asked you, you ask? sir. Maidley was furious, however, as he and spokesperson Duncan Dollimore constantly interrupted each other. See, Would you well, please answer the question, the question and, and, and not change the subject? Because we them. know that that's what you're doing. Maidley wanted a straight answer about why cyclists didn't need insurance, while Dollimore pointed out that the logistics of getting young people with bikes insurance made the proposition ridiculous. Plus, Dolly Moore was in favour of overhauling road laws anyway, so shouldn't they be in agreement? If you required six, seven, eight, ten-year-old children to have insurance, you'd have a system whereby many people would be discouraged from cycling. Pet insurance. Pet grief. Should we be entitled to this time off, or is compassionate leave for pets just going maybe a step too far? Maidley's raged war on beloved household pets more than once, including complaining about people getting leave when pets die. But he's also talking about the cost of pet insurance, wondering at exactly which point the insurance gets too expensive to be worth the life of your furry friend. How much, how much time off do you need? I think I'd need the rest of the week off then, The please. rest of the week? Yes. You want five days off? Even if you don't have pets of your own, this bizarre anti-animal stance he takes from time to time, presumably for no other reason than playing devil's advocate, will still frustrate you. He's so amazed at the idea of someone needing time off to grieve the loss of a pet, it's no wonder he'd consider letting a pet die rather than fork out for the vet. What price do you put on your pet's care? Is there a point where you say, too expensive, the dog has to die? Burkers. 
In 2020, Maidley was a panellist on an episode of Question Time, broadcasting from Milton Keynes. Is the barker a symbol of an increasingly divided Britain, and should it be banned? With Islamophobia rife in the country, one of the audience members asked what the panellists thought about burkas and whether they should be banned in Britain. I, I hate the sight of the burqa when I, when I have seen it. Um, I do see it as a, as a symbol of oppression. Though Maidley started off on a strong footing by saying he thought the argument about burkas was a wedge issue that UKIP were trying to force to distract from real issues, he then went on to talk about how much he hated burkas. He said banning them outright was the wrong thing to do, but that women should be encouraged not to wear them and that we should pity those who do. But in terms of banning it, I mean, I would dearly like to see it banned. I would, I, I would love never to see it again. Teenager with Eating Disorders Newsreader Mark Austin and his daughter Maddie appeared on GMB to talk about eating disorders a few years ago. Now, probably because of all the programming that I've done, particularly with Judy, about anorexia and eating disorders, I'll say this, I probably would have clocked it. They were both very honest and outspoken about their experiences dealing with her struggles with illness and how it took Mark a while to realise that his daughter needed help. That didn't stop Maidley, however, who was brash to say that were it one of his children suffering with eating disorders, he'd definitely have noticed right away. But you've been really honest, Mark. I mean, really, you know, sort of self-critical and said, you totally screwed up. You didn't recognise it for what it was. Well, I just I thought she was being a silly girl. He more or less accuses Mark of being a bad father for not spotting the signs, despite the fact that sufferers can be good at hiding things like that. So when you were getting it wrong, yeah. and how long did that period last for? What kind of things were you saying to her, which of course weren't doing any well, good? Maidley meets the squatters. In 2012, Maidley was sent on an adventure to find out how Britain's many squatters live. When people think squatters, they think, yeah, that's a family who go on holiday, 2.4 children, and they come back and people have moved into the house. He says that as he splits his time between a London residence and a house in the country, he's frightened of squatters deciding to break into his multiple homes. Do you get quality stuff? Like, do you get quality cuts of meat? You know? Yeah. I skipped Lindor chocolates last night. In the end, he is able to develop some sympathy for the squatters, who surely wouldn't be squatting if they had any other option, while also walking into their buildings and asking them whether they spoke English. Maidley also took personal offence to some squatters calling out a landlord for being greedy, who's trying to clear them out of a building he's left empty anyway. What's your supermarket skip of choice then? I mean, I personally quite like shopping Waitrose. at Waitrose. Waitrose. Waitrose, okay. So we have, we at last, we have something absolutely in common. Going against Mick Lynch. They feel that it's an act of almost sadism and unkindness. What ever happened to Christmas kindness? In the run-up to Christmas 2022, the RMT announced it was going to be striking across Christmas itself starting late on Christmas Eve and not ending until the 27th, hotly followed by more strikes in the first week of January. Shut Richard, early. Don't be ridiculous. Richard, you're just talking Co to commercial yourself Commercial Christmas for starts at the end of November you're, and you're early ranting. December. To answer for this, union boss Mick Lynch was yet again brought onto GMB to talk to Maidley, who had a bone to pick with him for ruining Christmas. I won't let you get away with nonsense. Well, you're, Christmas you're, you're does not start to on Christmas now, Eve. Richard. So let's just be clear. Despite public support at the time still being strong for striking workers, Maidley wanted to paint Lynch as the Grinch. He said the strikes were going to put shops and hotels out of business, and Lynch eventually got sick of him refusing to listen. Richard, why don't you just interview yourself if you want to Cheap talk point, to me Mr. Like Lynch. This? Sterling's tattoo. Star attacker and England player Raheem Sterling was in the news back in 2018, not for his talents on the field, but for getting a tattoo that was deemed publicly controversial. The ink is of an M16 assault rifle, and many people got so upset that they tried to demand Sterling had it lasered off, though Sterling explained that his father had been a victim of gun violence and he wasn't trying to glamorise firearms. It's all very well that, that in his head, and he's now made a statement about it, it's to do with his father. But Maidley, among other pundits, was still incensed, and he went as far as to compare Sterling getting a gun tattoo on his leg to him getting a tattoo of a swastika on his face. It's a bit like if I had a swastika on my cheek. Ali G impression. Morning then. I was here with my Judy to ask her some questions about this morning. Is this the single most embarrassing moment in British TV history? Following a poll conducted by The Sun about whether Maidley should change his hair, the This Morning producers took the suggestion that he should have an Ali G makeover on board. Now, Judy, when you was presenting with Richard, what does your real husband think? 
Richard, you are my real husband. I, I, I always thought you was like pretending. But rather than try to get Sasha Baron Cohen to prank Maidley, something that would have actually been entertaining, Maidley himself was done up as the mock interviewer and then sent out to talk to his wife, Judy Finnegan. What is it about him that you like? He's very nice. No, you know what I was meaning. What is it about him that you like? She was just as embarrassed as the public were watching, and he's never really been able to live this down. What is it about him, right, that, you know, makes you want the kids to go out away for a while and you go upstairs early to bed? Oh, don't be so ridiculous. I'm not going to start stroking your ego here. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.